Okay. Doing the right thing mm -hmm. almost always is the more difficult way. Mm -hmm. It is almost always easier just to go with the flow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How easy is it just to go and do what all your friends do, right? Hang out with everybody else. You know, the peer pressure or whatever, just to fit in. To go with the flow and fitting in is easy. What's difficult is going against the flow to do the right thing. Okay? Because you said, are you paying attention? Yeah. That if you do the right thing, it should make your life go easier. easier. Yeah. I don't want to say no. It's going to make your life more difficult. Doing the right thing makes your life more difficult because what makes your life easier to do is just to go with the flow. And going with the flow is usually not the right thing. Okay. So, Jacob could have thought, oh, my brother Esau's coming, he's going to be angry. Maybe I'll show By the way, you sent those uh, chat room thing to me. Mm -hmm. Did you bother to look to see if there were any questions in it? I didn't have time to do everything on the side. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, there are questions about, you know, bath and do I prefer champagne bubbles? And... Oh, we don't have time for those? No. <laughs> I want to talk about words of Torah. <laughs> okay, go, go, don't let me interrupt you. Gosh, oh, yes. oh, we're already so you just, you just follow the football game and let me mm -hmm. preach the Torah here. You got it. Thank you. So, Yaakov could have thought Esau's ticked off at me. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll send Esau my insights into this week's Pasha. Or I'll, I'll share with Esau a few CD-ROMs I've got of Rabbi Victor Miller. Or... Maybe I'll send him some uh, great Torah commentaries from my library and he'll be so happy. But no, Yaakov sees that Esau is not the kind of guy who's going to be bought off by Torah talks. I see. Because like, uh -huh. I once had this boss. So, but get to your point. What did he do instead? I want to hear what he does instead. I want, once had this boss and... Uh, what did he do instead? Let me just finish this point. No, I, this whole point doesn't make sense because I want to hear what he did instead, according to you. I once had this boss who... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who offered to pay me in Torah lessons. Yes. And that's just not where I was at. I wanted to be paid in cash. <laughs> not cash, I wanted to be paid in cash, <laughs> not in Torah lessons. Okay. So, Yaakov sends Esau all sorts of livestock. Livestock? Yeah. Because that's what Esau was into. Esau was into livestock. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, some people are just into livestock. And if you need to placate them, you send them livestock. And, and which and which verse is this where he sent them the livestock? Oh. Do you really doubt that he sends... I don't know where you're going with this, so I want to just, you know, I want you to enlighten us. So we're talking about chapter 32 of Genesis. Okay. And... Uh, And he took where tribute, chapter thirty two what verse fourteen, a tribute to thirty. To, let me get there, please. To Esau his brother, two hundred she goes, twenty he goes, okay. two hundred ewes, twenty rams. Put his in his servant's charge. Each drove separately. He said to his servants, "Pass on ahead of me." And uh, when my brother Esau meets you and asks you, saying, "Who are you?" you should say, "Your servant Jacob." This is a tribute sent to my lord to Esau. And so he's sending him all these droves of cattle okay. and livestock Fine. to uh, try to placate him. Okay. And uh, so some people really dig the livestock. <laughs> now, if you think they're going to fornicate with the livestock, <laughs> then you probably shouldn't send them livestock. Like send them um, cash or always pay with cash. No Torah lesson. Yeah, like some people just won't dig it if you offer to pay off your debts with Torah lessons. All right, keep going. Don't let me interrupt you. Okay. So, is the Torah saying it's okay to flatter people and to buy them off? And yeah, it's okay to flatter people, buy them off, if that's what will be effective. Like, you don't want to flatter people if they're not going to be flattered and it's not going to do you any good. And there's no point in trying to buy off people who won't be bought off, particularly not with what you're offering them. But pretty much everyone has a price, you just have to slip them what they want. And then you can often, like, placate them. 
So bribery sometimes works, and the Torah lives in the real world. So Yaakov is on one side of the river all alone at night, and he's wrestling with this unknown being, man, angel, all night. And after a whole night of wrestling, they're just like, ur, ur, ur. Yaakov is like, please tell me your name. And like, I dig that, because like, I've like, wrestled with a lot of like anonymous people who are trying to affect my life over the years. It's like, if I could just know their name. So that's like very human. I have that same problem in the chat room. Yeah, like you, you're desperate to know who the liberal world protector is. <laughs> it's like you've been wrestling with him all night, and it's like, please tell me your name. Right. But let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. Who was that angel? Uh, I think it was like the spirit of Aesop, some celestial representative of Aesop. It was the guardian angel of Aesop. Very okay. good. So they were kind of working it out. Well... The, the 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 lesson there is that Yaakov pinned him down. Yaakov won that match. You know, he he, he took a few punches, right? Mm -hmm. He tore his uh, hamstring on that one. But after fighting with this guy all night, uh, he pinned him down. Right? It's like you know, you ever watch like Ultimate Fighting? You would if it was chicks. Oh, like Lindsay, bras. the lingerie was, football league. Yeah, if it was chicks and bras. The lingerie football league uh, getting pinned down a lot. Mm -hmm. But if it was two guys, in a, in a, in a, they put them in a cage. These cage fighter guys. You ever seen this? Ultimate Fighting. No, I'm not into man wrestling. It's just not my thing. Oh, okay. And they beat the crap out of each other, right? Yeah, I'm more of a lover than a fighter. Okay. So um, he fought him all night, and then he won. He pinned him down. So the thing here is, when he pinned him down, and he's lived like he should not have been able to survive this angel fighting him. Because you're thinking like the angels, you know, probably like 6'3", 290. That angel could have been 75 feet tall. Who says he could have been 6 feet? Where did you get that idea from? Could have been 70 feet tall. Right? He, Yaakov shouldn't have survived that. But he did because he had Kaddish Baruch Hu on his side. He had God on his side. When he emerges and shows up at Aesop, Aesop's like, holy McGillicuddy, right? This guy should not have won. That guardian angel should have been looking over Aesop and kicked this guy's ass, right? And either forced Yaakov to turn around and go back or to kill him, right? So the fact that Yaakov survived that and where's the guardian angel now, he's been douched, right? Aesop is really scared of Yaakov now because he knows that God's behind him. Go on. Now he's got, now he doesn't, he can come unarmed. So, he can come unarmed. Think about that. It's like Asaph can be holding the forty-five of him. Yaakov doesn't care. He's going to walk in un unarmed. Because he doesn't have to fear. Rashi brings this down. Rashi says this. He brings down the Medrash. He says, Yaakov no longer has to fear Asaph. Asaph knows that Yaakov has beaten this angel. That means Asaph knows that God is with Yaakov. Go ahead. Who is Satan, and what kind of power does he have? Satan is just a uh, the guy God put in charge of the uh, evil inclination. He works for God. Does he have any independent power outside of God? No, he totally. Uh, he's a he's a he's a puppet. Are oh these God's God. representatives of the Satan? Uh, they they're the they're the handiwork of the Satan. Because <laughs> this is kind they of they are designed to distract you from this. Because this is kind of how the same Although if that's the JPS, is that the JPS? No, this is the Oscar. Okay, they're designed to distract you from that. If it was the JPS, the JPS would be to, to, to design to distract you from that. Don't you think they need more protection? Like, when guys play football, they have all these pads and they... You know, they I'm going to say that they don't protection. really hit each other. They don't really hit each other. They, they're just slamming into each other. Slamming into each other. It's like, wow, look at the level of the hits. But they're tougher than guys because they have fewer pads. Look at the look at the contact. Oh, well, I'm not buying it. Okay, next thing. And it's fourth and ten. It's no punting. I th would like to see this in the NFL. No punting in the NFL. Just like you just have to go for it on fourth down. I think it'd really really because you're an Australian and Australian rules they punt and it's like it's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah, but. Uh, I'm surprised. All right, just, can, we get back, can we get back to the Torah? Okay, they play, look at this hit. Boom! I'm trying to learn Torah here, and this guy's, you know, jacking off watching a bunch of chicks in underwear. Jacking off is prohibited by the Torah. <laughs>